Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of FUD's playing World End Economica. And we're still tr we're talk talking to Afro Guy, Saro. You can bring your complaints and questions directly here too. Since I'm usually in the shop, I'm not very counter. I'll be in the VIP room at the back. Are you living here or something? Exactly. Hmm. It's a bit frustrating, but at least the programming issue was going to work out. As a payment, yeah. You can pay me when we make it big. So I gave a sly laugh. Hagan and I both looked at each other, for instance, but since we couldn't waste money, we decided to nod for now and say our thanks. When we returned to a church, Lisa had come back and was making dinner. Welcome home. Did you see Saro? Yeah. You did? That's good. This is a time to depend on your connections. After speaking, Lisa quickly turned back to her kitchen, but... As I looked at her from behind, I recalled that exchange with Saro. That pillow. It wasn't that I absolutely wanted to try it, but I wasn't totally uninterested. When the thought occurred, without knowing it, I was staring. When I noticed, Hagana was giving me a curious look. I looked away quickly when I went to my room. That pillow. How was it? Moving my pillow, I tried a few things. I mean, getting fed up with how stupid I was acting, I fell flat on my bed. The next day, there was some movement about suspicious stock I bought into. The trigger seemed to be that someone went big and bought a big order. What right after, trading in the stock seemed to freeze for a moment. It was like seeing the exact moment the tides turned. The stock women hanging around 270 miles rocketed skyward. I immediately placed what were called market orders, not orders specifying a price like buy 1,000 shares at 270, but rather buying at whatever going price was at the market. I placed the order, even using the entire 5 million malls I'd promised to garner. The margin sellers were piling up over 30 times the daily volume, it seemed to explode at a moment. That was when a horde of sharp eyed traders like me flooded in. At the beginning, there was a number of large seller orders putting in resistance. The scent of blood from a chance of short squeeze was an even bigger crowd. There was a rush of orders and lag between the situation of a stock of the screen, the real situation started showing up. For moments, the movement would stop and when the price would suddenly jump 4 to 5 malls. We weren't able to keep up server side. In real world markets, if this happened, it would be a one sided climb afterwards. The guy who sold short and lost managed to buy to cut loose. And that caused other short sellers to close their balances. In a mere 10 minutes, it was up to 290. The daily movement limit to his stock was 354. Started around 270 of a dot, so about plus 30 off on that. Better on the country, price movement limits might not exist. It would exchange with levels of limits were set up among varied stocks. The price on the screen kept climbing and climbing, and in moments 300 was in sight. At 300, there was a glut of sell orders waiting. One thing you learn from trading is even though there's no rational reason for it, there's always huge orders waiting around multiples of 100 of or 10. It was a psychological turning point. If it broke for 300, there would be a bigger break point to speak of. If the sellers would put up resistance, this was it. There were 46,000 shares of buy orders versus 128,000 shares of sales. Sellers were bigger by 3 to 1, but still didn't think it would stop. At that moment, I opened up an order to buy on margin. Here it is. The first time something spoke to me telling me this was a moment. Maybe it was because I glanced at the water to sell orders. And I, a, I took a short breath before resuming trading. Fair off was in 10 million more as a limit of buying on margin. I could make an excuse of a guy who unpromised to not use margin. Plus, if profited, she wouldn't find out. In any case, in that moment, an or my order of a bit, of a bit under 40,000 shares was of a blazing trail. After that, it was like a fountain spraying. Whether that was a sweet set wide of victory or a spray of blood, depending on where you were standing. Holding back the urge to jump in my chair and shout, I put in the sell order and the instant my order went through. Set price of 349, 500 price limit of 354. Then put it at 354 because it went there. If we went in a fight, as a trade would be closed before market did. In that case, there'd be a chance for demons in the last 10 minutes would not kill me. Then put it at 350 because it was a round number. Right now, the stock is hitting new highs. To accept the people who were caught in the short sales, everyone else was taking their profits. If everyone else is aiming to take their profits on 350, in that nice round psychological point, that would be a place where everyone would want to sell. That's why I put an order just before that. 349. Like an old anime spaceship throttle, the price of the stock on the screen rushed forward. 
There's no feeling like watching your position get larger with every breath. That feeling of omnipotence, like having made the right decision, that feeling of superiority, of having beat out other people. Then, 27 minutes before the end of the morning session, the deal closed at 349 ball. Profit, a bit over 3.6 million balls. That feeling of your head tingling with your hair standing on end. This was it. That feeling I'd long forgotten. I was so happy I couldn't speak. So I took a deep breath. Looking at the rush of buy orders flooding in when we're stuck at it with daily limit, I laughed tiredly. Not feeling bad about it, even if I had a minute again, was the ironclad path to victory. Sarcastically, I made sure I didn't forget to tell myself that. Just as I was looking at the screen, unable to contain my smile, Hagana came into the living room from the hall. Hmm? She had a suspicious look that said, There's a wacko here, but I didn't care. She came in a bit closer, I might have even run over and hugged her. I might get to a point where we definitely win before you start catching up with your maths. I said to Ghana as she went to a bathroom. As she put her hand on the doorknob, she turned around slightly. But you'll give at least 50,000 more some prize money, right? Hmm, yeah. And that works too. Hey, Ghana said that and headed to the bathroom. I thought she'd be a bit more competitive and annoyed at my success, but she didn't seem that way at all. I was a bit disappointed and returned my eyes to a screen. Oh, did it go that well? He's appeared in the hallway leading to a church. She had a triangle cloth on her head and a mask on, apparently for cleaning. I turned around and Lisa ma took a mask off to reveal a knowing smile. Shut up. <laughs> Things went well and you want praise. How honest of you. Lisa was really sharp eyed. I held my head in front of a computer. Anyway, I wonder if I could cut things off here. What were you doing all morning? Huh, big house cleaning. Is that time of year? Nope. But it's about all I can do after all. What? When after out of confusion, Lisa took a cloth from her head and looked, took off her gloves. She ran through and behind her and came into a living room in relief. It can't be of any direct to help you either, either you or Hagana. In that case, it can be of use to keep this place clean. Just being in a clean place can give power. I don't really get it, but... As I, I said as I turned back to the screen, it's better to get in, in being dirty. Right. Oh, well, besides that, having delicious food, clean clothes... Oh, hell. You're always popping your neck and shoulders. Should I give you a massage? Lisa waggled his long fingers and spoke. Ooh, a massage of Lisa. Yes, please. For some reason, she was hunched over like a witch trying to scare children. What was she up to? I don't need that. Oh, getting a massage from a young woman like me isn't something would happen every day, you know. You shouldn't be the one saying that. Oh, oh. Lisa laughed so theatrically and went just to a sink. As I watched her back, though, in my heart, if it were that pillow, then I sighed. The next day, there wasn't anything in particular of note. I was still profiting at a good pace, and in the end, I managed to get the amount I control to 10 million moles by the end of a week. Essentially, I earned more than 5 million moles. By doubling in a week, if that kept happening, I'd be able to gather the entire wealth of humanity. But that definitely wasn't going to continue. Still, I managed a pretty hefty return with 5 million moles. The volatility of the market was big, so just by using that, the profits have enlarged. Mr. Trush had slowed down in the last half a week, and after reversal, it settled at 47.8. The distant second place with 31 mini moles had already stopped trading. At this rate, getting second was definitely realistic. If you get into second place, that 50,000 moles would go straight to Lisa, and be headhunted by Schrodinger Street and leave this place. And giving something back to a place that took care of me before moving on to some bigger things? That didn't sound so bad. Jokes aside, it might be possible to get there without Hagana. I thought that, but it was obvious that if I started treating Hagana like dead weight, that'd cause trouble. Lisa probably wouldn't like that, and Hagana was holed up in a room doing whatever she does. Going back and forth with Afro Soro, apparently she'd already received a programme. And so Sunday, the day of rest for Wax Warriors came. I was staring into space while eating breakfast. While my laptop was leased on, I was so out of it that Lisa was laughing. Hagana finished eating her toast and was drinking her hot milk. As you put a cup down and spoke. I was back testing the program and. Huh? I was all going to say to her sudden words. And so? I don't know whether my music is wrong or if the program is wrong. 
but no one's going to say. We mail back and forth a lot and I still can't figure it out. Uh huh. And so? I looked at her garden and she started staring at her cup. What's going on? When I hesitated, Lisa, who'd been washing things behind Ghana, tried to signal something go to me over her shoulder. When I finally understood. Ah, you want to go back to a big ball cafe? The Ghana looked up. Yeah. And say so. The hmm. Ghana's lips formed a thin line. At least I remember how to get there. As I said, that was pulling up from a map from laptop. Lisa glared at me from behind Hagana. At the same time, Hagana was in her own way, looking down at a table with no expression. There was something she wanted to say, but couldn't. Please come with me. That's what she wanted to say, too, clearly. Looking between Lisa and Hagana a few times, my dulled wits found my way to a correct answer. Oh, do you want to go together? It was more of a jerk than a jump, but when I asked, Hagana jumped a little and looked at me slowly. Please. Hagana said that one thing clearly, and Lisa shook her head and went back to washing. When we went back to a big ball cafe, Hagana seemed afraid of Soro's head. We couldn't just be that she was afraid of Soro himself. Even if she were afraid, she probably wasn't comfortable with unfamiliar people. Hagana was strong-willed and oddly weak in places. And wouldn't be surprised if she was outside a timid little miss. The sooner better? I wanted to be in time for Monday. All right. I glumped down my last ham and eggs and shut down my computer. Is that guy even awake at this time? No one had an answer to my muttering. Sunday mornings had a special air about them. On weekdays, the atmosphere in the city was very attractive, very active, possibly due to many people working. However, on days off, everything was somehow more relaxed and calm. But also fewer people in the streets, so the air felt refreshing. As always, along the way I would look at things on the street and wonder what companies they came from. It was about once in a while I wound up being in some distance from Agana. This time she didn't complain or glare at me. When I slowed down, she'd stop and look aimlessly as she waited for me. Then we'd walk off again. While well, doing this constantly, we came to a big bowl. We AI, we CI, and BI. And we're super jazzy music as well. When we entered, we found a large man who tried to be suited with a name and replaced the number counter. Reading an e magazine board, he glanced our way sharply. Welcome! The guy had completely frozen, so dead centre of the automatic door. Ah, is there around? Boss? In the far back, room 2. Thanks. The outside like guy gave a gruff nod and went back to his magazine. I turned around. But still frozen her Ghana and motioned to her to move her back. However, she didn't even move when I started walking off, so I took Hagana's hand and pulled her along. The option was glancing between us and his magazine. In the end, I got the feeling he was smiling. You're not scared? As I walked through a narrow maze of walls, Hagana spoke. Huh? You seem like a bad person. Bad? Well, it wasn't a banker. Hagana seemed to have trouble coming up with a response to that, but her question was serious. She's trained me, buddy, and most people don't seem that scary. How? You've trained? You didn't see me crash that Tomoya guy? The Yama guy? Most adults around here I can beat easily. I see. Then Hagana nodded. I thought about saying something, but decided not to. I had a feeling of being afraid of big men wasn't just due to a simple difference in strength, but also some other reason. Even if she had come here of all places, she wouldn't have come here by herself if she was able to. Yeah, so I guess number two is here. The end of a place, there were two rooms. Number one and number two rooms cost three times as much as the other booths. You awake? I knocked on the door. The place was white, so I couldn't shout. Despite knocking a few times, there was no answer. So I opened the door gently. There was some kind of movie playing silently on my computer screen. Do you have headphones on and can hear? Immediately I shut the door. What happened? Hagana asked, looking at me. I replied somewhat hurriedly. Can you go over there for a bit? Why? I just do it, please. She didn't look very happy, but eventually she went. Ah. So he's busy. Very movie. In. 
five it. Interesting. Reluctantly, she went back down to a hall about three steps. Her garners browsed forward, but she did go back another few steps. I nodded, opened up a door, and went in. Whoa. Now that's a sight. And that computer screen as well. In the booth, there was a silent porn video playing all over the screen. Hey! I felt like Sarah's head as, I slept, as he stepped on the sofa. Soon, Sarah woke up and looked at me sleepily. Hmm, huh? Oh? The one who made a mumble sound so when he roared wide. There was a tall guy swimming over his line on the sofa, his legs below and knee was sticking out. We would better go home and sleep in a place like this. When Sarah was yawning, I cut the power to the screens. I've just seen a girl about Lisa's age in appropriate attire. We went to a deep space background doing inappropriate things. Don't doze off with what you porn on. Hmm. Oh, not to your taste? That series of pretty lovely girls in it too. All naked except for some space gear. Ain't it great? I'm not talking about that. And what? Oh, you want something like Little Miss Hagana? Well, not like it doesn't exist, but you're gonna get arrested, huh? Hey, I'm seriously gonna kill you. I got it, I got it. Don't get worked up. I grabbed Soro's lapel and was squeezing, but Soro was unfazed. Getting worked up and looking stupid, Soro let go. He scratched his head and laughed crudely. And what? What she wants? Jeez, I kind of want something from you. Ah, she's here. Soro was surprised and adjusted his clothes in quickly. There was so much to fix, he was clutching his hair. She's waiting right outside, and door was porn playing. And tell me, she's going to think I was some kind of creep. Like I care. She knew about the program wasn't working right. Oh, she said nothing about her emails. Let me call her in. Yeah, I'm good. Facing the small room on the wall, was turning his face to the left and right, messing with a big mass on his head. When I put my head out of the room, I bored her gun and looked my way. She clearly seemed relieved, but her voice was also a bit stern. She came kind of silent being left out. It's okay? Yeah, we're done done with preparations. Ah, I see. When I pulled him back into the booth, the gunner stepped in somewhat hesitantly. It wasn't like she'd never seen anything like it before, but it was so different from Richard's church, it probably made her uneasy. Hey, Mr. Gunner. The gunner just nodded at Sarose's greeting. Sarose put him a chair in front of a computer, round and smiled, inviting him to sit down. The gunner hesitantly sat herself down on it. I heard you had an issue with a program. Yeah. I'm setting the time period for statistics calculations so the error comes up, for example. As the switch had fixed dinner, a guy took out the terminal, started explaining. I listened, but I had no idea what was going on. It sounded like magic spells to me. There didn't seem to be any need for me, and it was crammed with three people, so I put my hand on the door and made, it, made to leave. A guy stopped her explanation at an instant. Huh? When I turned around, our eyes met. She had a most defenceless face that said, Are you going to leave? My heart jumped and I froze. But I didn't want the road to notice, so I quietly stopped my shoulders, took my hand off the door, looked at me, and leaned lightly on my desk. I kind of watched worriedly, and resumed her explanation. It all happened in the space of a second. So I was frowning at her questions, and it didn't seem like he noticed. And so the jazzy music starts back up again. The Garner started conversing with Soro again. While I watched him, I struggled to calm beating in my heart. True, this cramped place, messy place to be scared to be left alone in, even for a girl like Hagana. What surprised me was Hagana's defenseless face. I was struck by a strong protective urge, like I was strongly moved to defend her. A true sense of moe. I never belied on someone by this much. While leaning against the table, I thought it. Didn't feel that bad. Hmm, I see. It's gotta be... Soros muttering as Hagana spoke. Ha! Huh, not bored. Soros spoke suddenly while Hagana was speaking. Come on, you can play games there, you can connect to the net there, you can use it for some time since this can take some while. It will. Yeah! Since the offer, I went round to the table looking at stuff scattered there. At the same time, Soros turned back to Hagana and spoke seriously. Well, Hagana, you really simulate my intellectual curiosity. It may look like this, but I like to have problems. Makes it worth doing. 
a snicker just listening to that from the side. Really? Yeah. I was an engineering student, you know. I don't think that I'd be able to talk math with a girl like you. I see. It's obviously flattery, but while Hagana was slightly hesitant to look downward, she didn't look unhappy about it. No doubt it was fun to have someone to talk on, a, on her level with her favourite subjects. Lisa's head hurt from the from stuck, so she couldn't do it. Her students were her students, so not in the right position for that kind of chatter. So I mean that Stero was quite intelligent in her own right. But was that true? The only people who come to the shop are dirty rats like this guy. I'd love it if you gave more. Hey, what's with dirty? Well, it's the truth. A bunch of complaints came in, but there was that smell. Yeah. How smelled? Ah, see? So I laughed and Hagano agreed. Damn, but if it's true, there's no helping it. I gave up on retorting and fled to games. Powering up the display, I went to stick my memory card for a gaming machine. I stuck my head under a cable. For instance, Soro jumped up from the sofa, his mouth working silently. <gasps> Looking in from under a desk, I wondered what the heck he was up to. Then, when Soro's hand moved past the gunner, I made motions of the screen. I remember he'd left porn running. What's wrong? Nagano asked Soro. Soro looked at her. Nagano twisted and made her turn his way. Game over. That's the face that Soro had on. At that moment, I forcibly lanked the cables in my hand. For a while, the computer itself shut down. By the time Nagano turned around, there shouldn't be anything on the screen. What's going on? Hagano's eyes went from the screen back to us. Oh, I pulled the wrong plug. Oh yeah, it's it's alright. So I played along. Hell oh, really. Whew. Yeah, don't worry about it. Hell, thank God. Thank God. While Sir and I exchanged words, the gunner tilted her head, doing question marks the whole time. Hagana was saved from porn. It ended up being afternoon by the time we left the Big Ball Cafe. Starting from Hagana and Soro's talks, they made adjustments to the program right there, so it took extra time. Even so, according to Soro's boasting, he was about the only person who could work that quickly. I didn't know how true that was, but he certainly typed fast. At first, I was wondering whether or not he was just slapping keys to show, in front, show off in front of Hagana. Ultimately, the issues Hagana mentioned seemed fixed. I actually put in some numbers and looked at results and nodded satisfaction. It was just that by the time we left the Big Ball Cafe, the only thing left on my mind was lunch. Hey! I turned around and spoke. Hagana was putting a terminal with a freshly completed program carefully in a bag. You go back alone. Why? I'm going to eat something around here. Wouldn't be able to last until a church. Or a. Hear me? While we were programming, Soro had gracefully offered to get some pizza, but Hagana turned him down. Apparently, Lisa would have food prepared at the church while we get back. However, if I kept pace with Hagana from here, it'd take 30 minutes. I couldn't say that I wouldn't starve along the way. You know the way back, right? I asked as we went down the narrow stairs of a landing between stairs. Hagana stopped and stood there. What? I stopped and asked. Hagana lifted up her head and spoke. I'll do the same. Let's take a good look for Gala. After a moment of surprise, I spoke. It's food at the church, though. I plan on eating that too, you know. Hagana never ate all that much. Hagana's eyes looked surprised at my words, but soon her expression tightened as so I spoke with a glare. There's no food at the church. Huh? Now I'm wrong with questions. That's because having food at the church was the reason she used to turn Soros off her pizza down. Lisa wasn't going to make something before she went off to a part time job. She didn't. My brain was having trouble working for Munger, so I couldn't see why. Did she want to eat alone with me? I was half joking and thinking about silly idea when it struck me. You're that afraid of Savo? When I said it while laughing, she shrank down visibly. That was it. Oh well, he said it does have a powerful presence. Huh? She was looking unhappily even after being found out, but she looked at me after I spoke and then nodded. I don't like men. She whispered. You know I'm a man too, right? When I actually looked down the stairs at me and spoke clearly. 
Aren't you a kid? I see. My face froze a bit of that, when, but when I got to finish speaking, she again in composure and quietly went downstairs like she normally did. When she came right in front to me, she spoke. So, where are we eating? Take me there now. I saw my shoulders and was about to start walking. Being treated like a kid by a girl shorter than myself and getting pissed at it. I guess it was still a kid. While well, mulling over that, I suddenly had an idea. A great idea. An idea to end the episode. Well, as ever, thank you very much for watching. My name has been Fudge, so remember to like and subscribe to this video, and as many more as you want to as well. Be sure to check out some of my other series as well. I say thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful day. Bye bye.